So this is Margaret in her natural habitat, just outside chilling with the man I love, having a braai in what could possibly be the last Sunday without David. And we're just so excited to meet our son, we can't wait. I have mixed feelings, I feel a bit strange because I'm scared to do this alone and I think at this point in time we know that I am definitely going to do it alone because South Africa is in its second wave of the coronavirus and how oh, just prepping my mind to be going through this experience alone. Nonetheless, we're super excited. Mommy and Daddy are just out here chilling. It's so nice and cool today. It's the most temperate weather it's been in a long time, which I love. And we're just sitting reminiscing about what has been 2020, what has been the past few months in this year, what it's been like living through an actual pandemic, what it's been like for us to be expecting David just this year and, and what it entailed. And as we were going through this, I asked Chris, so what do you think was the most intense experience of my pregnancy for you? And I thought he'll probably say something horrible like, um, you're farting more or something horrible like that. <laughs> but um, because that's not true, as we all know, the fairies come at night and just clear up the space. We all know this. Nonetheless, we came to the conclusion that 16 October this year was definitely one of the worst experiences we've had combined as a couple, but also just of this pregnancy in a year full of uh, hectic experiences. What a tumultuous year. But 16 October is something neither Chris or I have spoken about to many people. In fact, his mom knows and my parents know we didn't tell our children and we didn't want to put that energy out into the vlogmosphere or South Africa at that point in time because if you google that date in time in South Africa it was just not the moment to bring attention to that specific cause in my mind at that time um, but today I definitely want to speak about it because not only as a part of my pregnancy journey but it is also part of my journey in life our journey as a couple and it could definitely open up real meaningful conversations about crime in South Africa about how we deal with crime about um, just a multitude of things just so many different facets of this story that we could be speaking about and anybody that knows me knows I love a conversation I love dialogue and speaking to people with differing opinions to myself but obviously also opinions that um, you know that drive forward a meaningful conversation so what happened that day was that Chris and I were busy doing a delivery for chicken because I had started selling chicken during my pregnancy. Yes, actress by trade, but also just whatever. <laughs> I pretty much hustle in many things and one of the things that I have been selling during pregnancy is chicken. So we were busy doing a delivery and Chris was with me that day because we were on our way to his mom's house. We wanted to go visit and swim. It was a scorcher that day. And we were on our way to his mom from an area called Capital Park in Pretoria. And we didn't want to take the long route. So we decided to go the easiest slash quickest route which is past the zoo and so we went past the zoo and 
this is what I do whenever I'm in a car I always look in all the mirrors whenever I approach a, a robot or as people in other countries call them traffic lights I or a stop sign or whatever I usually close my window to about this and I observe in my mirrors it's just a thing I do or I also stop quite a distance away from the car in front of me because I just you know I have this mindset of feeling like I'm a soldier <laughs> I know it's so weird probably people are gonna say it's like post-traumatic stress disorder but I always find myself thinking the way I would if I'm a in a Jean-Claude Van Damme movie I probably feel like I'm Jean-Claude Van Damme so this is how I think and so I observe and the next moment I see I lock eyes with a guy in a group of four men and the moment I lock eyes with them I'm like okay and I'm like Chris close your window they're coming they're approaching that wasn't even out of my mouth yet and they were on Chris's side one guy at my window three at Chris's window and before he could close it because his car has electric windows before he could close his window this one guy's hand was through the window he'd switched off the car and took the keys and had put a knife to Chris's throat another guy had a knife uh, to this part of Chris and another guy that was standing there was uh, basically the I don't know he was the heavy like he was trying to keep the door closed or something so Chris couldn't open the door so two people had physical actual knives on Chris and then the car was also switched off and now we're in this horrible part of town um, we making eye contact with the people at the robot next to us but some people in the minibus next to us were just laughing at us and then other people were trying not to make eye contact with us or with any with the entire situation so obviously people are scared and, and they didn't want to help um, and then the guy at my window my window was like that so he couldn't put his arm through and he kept screaming but my brain blocked him out because all I could see is Chris having two knives on him right now and um, I don't know what what happened in Chris's mind but the next moment he just gives this guy his chips that he was eating and the guy throws the chips back at Chris and later Chris told me he thought the guy had told him he's hungry anyway so Chris gives him chips the guy throws it back and now he's rummaging through the center console he takes Chris's brand new iPhone and um, he feels his pockets whatever and but, but it just happened to, it was such a su surreal experience and like I said I feel like Jean-Claude Van Damme most of the time so I could just see in my brain how I'm gonna grab this guy because at some point he had to take the knife off of Chris's neck in order to reach farther in to get the iPhone on the center console etc and I just could see in my brain how I'm gonna grab this guy and hold him while Chris punches him or whatever but that couldn't have happened because of the other two men on Chris's side and of the knife being here in his side so we were just helpless and then at some point while this is happening I start hearing the guy at my window and he just incessantly says give me your phone give me your phone but like in I think my vernacular language in Afrikaans he just keeps saying like he went from English to Afrikaans like give me your phone give me your... and then I start blocking out these people and now I can just hear this guy I actually thought he, he would try to break the window but he didn't and here's the bizarre part I kept telling him I don't I don't have a phone I don't have my phone that's the only phone and you know later when we left the scene I realized that both my phones 
had fallen out of my handbag and were in his view on the floor because I put my feet on top of my handbag because my handbag was by my feet but the funny thing is he knows that I was lying because both my phones had fallen out and he saw them and I kept saying I don't have a phone and here's the funny thing about this story is at some moment when he kept saying give me your phone and I'm like I don't have a phone I looked him straight in the eye and I said to him leave me alone I'm pregnant and he literally turned around and walked away and that's what I just told Chris what was the weirdest thing about this experience is couldn't he have seen before I actually told him that listen I am pregnant wasn't it visible because I mean I've been super visible since my first month <laughs> and so what if you're not pregnant your life means nothing it's just such a weird thing that that statement that I made put him in that mindset to turn around and walk away and yeah so that was an intense experience they threw Chris's key back and we were able to go and thank God we both alive and unscathed and when we left there I felt like I was gonna go into labor my belly was hard rock hard and I was just my whole body was pumping full of everything cortisol adrenaline everything and this is one of the most horrible things about a situation like this is a lot of people like to victim shame so many people will be like okay so uh why wasn't your window like this when you knew you were going there okay yes you should always be uh, as vigilant as possible I get that but I hate that people victim shame because honest to goodness we shouldn't be living in a society where this is normalized or where victims are victim shamed what happened to us is wrong and it doesn't matter that his window was open it's summer for goodness sake so yes I'm going to continue being like Jean-Claude Van Damme, but I also feel that we, we should have a conversation. How do you guys feel about crime in South Africa? What, what are we going to do, people? What, where are we going to with this? What are the drivers? Is it poverty? Is it because, yes, poverty is absolutely a driver for crime. But then we see a lot of brutal crime as well. Good example of this would be, well, for the lack of a better word, bad example of this would be that farm murders went up so substantially during the lockdown. And most farm murders are immensely brutal. If I were somebody that wanted to uh, invade somebody's home because I wanted resources I wanted to take things in order to sell them in order to feed my family because absolutely every single person should have food and comfortable accommodation absolutely my heart goes out to the plight of every single person on earth to have a good place to stay food to eat safety and security so I understand when you're hungry that is an absolute driver for crime but just hear me out if I were in the space that I just wanted to steal something in order to sustain myself and my family I would try to do that as quickly as possible like go in get the stuff and go before I get caught why then do we see so many crimes in our country that are so violent and so uh, <laughs> just unnecessary like how do you take the time to torture a family if your intention is just to steal something to sustain yourself so I'd love for us to have this conversation I'd love for each and every person that is going to comment on this vlog to remain respectful towards other people and the opinions of other people 
to remain respectful towards the humanity of others and let's have an open discussion about our beautiful country South Africa and how we as a nation can move forward to eradicate the scourge of crime. Thank you for listening to my vlog. I hope you guys have a blessed day and have an amazing week. God bless you. Bye.